The 2011 British action-adventure war film Ironclad chronicles the siege of Rochester Castle by King John in 1215, a real historical event. But how true to history is this entertaining movie? The movie takes place in the early 13th century, after the writing of Magna Carta, which limits the power of King John and grants rights to the freedmen under the king. This film is based upon a battle that took place after King John signed Magna Carta. The film shows that John felt forced to agree with the ideas in Magna Carta and wanted to revoke his signature. Magna Carta, meaning Great Charter, was a royal charter of rights agreed to by King John of England at Runnymede near Windsor on the 15th of June 1215. It was first drafted by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Cardinal Stephen Langton, to make peace between the unpopular king and a group of rebel barons. The charter promised the protection of church rights, protection for the barons from illegal imprisonment, access to swift and impartial justice and limitations on feudal payments to the crown to be implemented through a council of 25 barons, all of which were rebels. Neither side stood by their commitments and the charter was annulled by Pope Innocent III, leading to the First Barons' War. The movie shows the Knights Templar as amongst the ringleaders in the battle against John. In reality, the Templars and King John had a cordial relation, and they were one of the few powerful groups in England which John did not offend or alienate during his reign, and the Order was amongst his financial backers, providing him with the necessary funds to wage war. Thomas Marshall, the main character played by James Purefoy, is loosely based upon the medieval knight and statesman William Marshall. Though William was not a rebel, but one of the few English earls to remain loyal to the king through the First Barons' War. It was William whom King John trusted on his deathbed to make sure John's nine-year-old son Henry would get the throne. The film depicts the castle realistically. However, the nearby Norman Cathedral and the city of Rochester itself are completely missing. In reality, the cathedral is only a few hundred yards from the castle walls, and Rochester has been a substantial settlement since Roman times. John is known to have sacked the cathedral and took anything of value, and stabled his horses in it. The battle that took place in order to protect Rochester Castle did in fact happen. However, nearly everything portrayed in the movie has been incredibly romanticised. William de Albany commanded the garrison, but contemporary chroniclers do not agree on how many men it consisted of. Estimates range from 95 to 140 knights, supported by crossbowmen, sergeants and others. In the movie, de Albany is dragged before the king and forced to watch as the hands of two prisoners are chopped off. After a defiant verbal exchange with John, he is subjected to the same fate and then hurled by the castle trebuchet to the keep wall. In reality, William de Orbigny was imprisoned after John captured the castle. He became a loyalist on the ascension of Henry III in October 1216 and was a commander at the Second Battle of Lincoln on the 20th of May 1217, and he wasn't an ennobled wool merchant as the movie portrays. The film also heavily shows dirty, miserable peasants. It depicts many of them in the castle square, huddled up against a wall, shivering and soaking wet, covered in mud and filth. But mud-covered peasants are a myth of the Middle Ages, Hygiene was much more commonly practiced than typically thought, and the common depiction of a dirty commoner is relatively inaccurate. Also, the film's Danes are depicted as Hungarian-speaking, Viking-like pagans, when Denmark had been Christianized by this time. Also, King John's mercenaries were mostly Flemish and Aquitanians, 
not Danes. The fight scenes are very bloody for dramatic effect, though in truth medieval warfare was brutal and the movie correctly shows weapons and armour used during this period. Like in the movie, John did take the castle, with most of the higher nobles being imprisoned or banished, and the French did not arrive in England until some six months after the siege had ended. The closing narration explains that this was one of the first victories that the French had that would eventually lead to total victory. However, not mentioned in the narration was that after John's death in 1216, many of the English rebels preferred a weak English king in the person of nine-year-old Henry III over an experienced French monarch and thus rallied around Henry. The rebellion was defeated by royalist supporters in 1217. Ironclad is an entertaining movie which I recommend watching, but as with most historical based movies it diverts from the real history, swapping historical authenticity for dramatisation. <laughs>